Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for inviting me uh, to the disclosures. First, I'm not a gerontologist, I'm an oncologist. So I'm coming from quite a different aspect, but I'm representing here the Ministry of Health, mostly our strategic planning division, our uh, geriatric division, and a few others. Uh, another disclosure is I'm not going to talk about longevity, I'm going to talk about a national plan for preparing a healthier aging for the population. And the last small disclosure, which I would not have time to speak about it during this presentation, but it should be clear for all of us that healthy aging is starting from birth. And it's not an issue to start when you have patients in the 60s, 70s or 80s with multiple chronic medical conditions. Actually, to become a healthy man or woman at your 80s, you need to start a many, many uh, aspects of health and lifestyle from a very young age. So Israel is indeed, as the, world, as the rest of the world, is uh, dealing with the situation of uh, a, a, a massive enlargement in the portion of the elderly population here is for the age of 65 and above. So we are one of the youngest population uh, among OECD countries, but from 12% that so we are here today, we are expecting till 2045 to be around 15%, and if we are talking about 75 and above, that would be a, a, even a more sharper a, a, a curve. We'll have around 6 to 7% of the population at that time, above 75. And among the countries with the highest life expectancy, you could see as well in the right hand side, some of the words are in Hebrew. So we have a good 10 years gap between expectancy of life and expectancy of good health. And that is not a unique situation here, it is quite similar to most of the OECD countries. We could see that 40% of uh, people at the age of 55 to 60, pre-aging, uh, suffering from at least three chronic conditions that many of them would become a major issue uh, in the next decades that these people live. And 50% of people of 75 or above are suffering from at least five chronic conditions. Many of them would become or would be part of what you, you call uh, the geriatric giants. We have problems in Israel, and as you could see on the right side, uh, the number of geriatric uh, rehabilitation beds is low and is uh, uh, elevated slowly, too slowly, and if you would adjust it to the population growth, and we are a country with a very high fertility and we have a growth of 2% a year, we see a continuous fall in numbers during the last years and we would continue on seeing it unfortunately unless we will take some harsh uh, steps to change and reverse it. One of the moves that we are doing is making a, a, a much more in the community and that is true not only for the uh, elderly population but for all of us. We do believe that we need hospitals for many acute conditions but still many medical uh, expertise, procedures and treatment could be given in the community near the home of the patient and that is certainly true for the elderly population. You could see the trend starting 2018, only 67 patients were treated as home hospitalization uh, for the year of... I have to get rid of this. How do I get rid of it? somewhere. Okay. Everywhere that they will grab it, it will create some problem. This is the Zoom days. So, uh, COVID came, and from 2020, we started to boost strongly for home hospitalization. You could see the jump during the COVID years. So, they are 21, 7, uh, 7,500 patients treated for more than 30,000 hospitalization days at home. The year of 2022, I don't have the final numbers, but it could be around 20% more than that. And that is a very clear trend that we are taking. It is more efficient, it is much better for the patient, and it's of course a, a more feasible in a small country like us 
when we have massive infrastructure issues. So, uh, I'll, I'll play all the time, this is Chuck Barada, but I won't not manage. So, uh, when we are looking at our expenses, of course, it is very clear that hospitalization expenses for people up 75 and above, although they are only 5% are expected to be 5% of the population, uh, nearly 30% of uh, hospitalization expenses is used to treat them. Uh, medication expect, uh, ex, uh, expenses are extremely high. Clinics visits are much higher than uh, among young people. We are a country with a high number of clinic visits. It's very really like to see the GPs. So we have around a, a national average of nine, but the man 75 and above is 22 visits a year. It's a huge number and we have to find a way to make it more efficient. And the total cost, medical cost per person is much higher, is more than three times higher for people 75 and above. So that serves 75% of all hospitalization. We have a 22 return hospitalization rate among the elderly and three times more with the productor. Let's go ahead, this allows me to go ahead. Uh, years of healthy living have to do with many issues. And I would just touch for into the issue of a uh, of hip fracture. So of course femoral fractures are common mostly among elderly people. We see it in more in younger women, but then also in men it's the same at that age. Uh, other major problems, so around twelve percent of sixty-five and above experience of fall and thirty-six percent of all hospitalization patients uh, who arrive with an injury. Uh, are people above the age of 65. And we have an annual a direct cost, uh, as a national cost, about more than 700 million shekels just for uh, these structures and rehabilitation. So these are the challenges of the system, and there are many of them, but I was putting them in five categories. Uh, uh, of course, we are talking about a population that consumes major share of severe and chronic morbidity. The population that uh, has a very significant share in national health expenditure, as I have shown you, the need of service adaptation. One of our problems is that our services are not adjusted properly for the elderly population, and there are unique, unique uh, needs and unique uh, infrastructure which is needed for this population. Uh, this lack of both of general and uh, specialized manpower, and manpower is the main issue. And I'm talking about the whole range, the whole spectrum of manpower from long, uh, long term care, caregivers who comes uh, unfortunately mostly from uh, a long list of countries, Nepal, Uzbekistan, and many others. We have to first teach them the language, then we have to teach them the rules and I would say a minimal standard of working and of course we need to teach them a lot about the mentality. Uh, we have many success stories with that but it's not an easy issue and the state must take responsibility to find a, a kind of a, a, a threshold, the minimal threshold needed for these people. Talking about specialized nurses, talking about specialized physical therapists, occupational therapists and certainly geriatric physicians. Geriatrics, unfortunately, is not a desired speciality, it's not a desired residency in Israel. We must look for more incentive to bring young people into the arena. And last, there are many, many uh, market failures. I don't know due to time and how much time do you give me to go? A couple of minutes, so I would not have time to go into uh, the, uh, the mechanisms of failure of, of uh, financial failures in the system, but we have many uh, financial failures which we are starting to take some steps to, uh, to solve them. So we are looking into 30 comprehensive performance incentive structures, and when we are talking about incentive programs in Israel, usually we take not a huge sum of money, but rather, a, a, I would say, a, a, a precise amount of money would just create this incentivization process among caregivers that would be usually to the HMO, so or to put for lima or six funds, or to any other treating facility like a hospital. And by that we could, uh, in a very, uh, I think, easy way, put things ahead. We did it with neonatal units, we did it with emergency rooms, 
we are doing it for a few other uh, major topics that we had recognized failures in our system and now we are going to do it in 30 different aspects of geriatric treatment. And of course there's nothing to be done alone, so uh, Joint Eschel is a partner for a lot of what is being done. That just to show you how complicated is the system and how many stakeholders do we have here. So with the business sector and NGOs, of course the Ministry of Health with the HMOs, the hospitals, uh, clinics in the community, national insurance, the welfare ministry, prime minister office, national security council and many others. We have to engage all of these important bodies that have met so many other missions to be involved in this great project. I will skip this one due to time. In general, when I would divide what we are doing, it would be divided to the light blue color, which is a more kind of an infrastructure and a systemic reform that should be done. You could take a picture before the time before it gets wrong me out. I would not have time to go all of it. And then what should be done for the individual patient or the individual human being, and that would be in dark blue in the right. But we believe in health uh, promotion that has to mostly be all over the community. We have to have much more or many more prevention programs all over. We have to train our caregivers how to uh, uh, early detect issues and how to prevent potential uh, issues. Again, I would not go into the giants, but many of them are related to the giants, etc. And you could see here that uh, as this structure is working, there are four more, uh, major points that, are, so that hopefully would start the, this year, the year 2023. We are still waiting for the budget to end. Hopefully, we'll have a state budget till the end of April or sometime mid-May, uh, uh, which would allow this program to run. But it has to do with uh, early detection and primary uh, prevention in the community. Uh, <coughs> advancing uh, prevention in primary care units, uh, preserving elderly uh, persons' functions in general hospital. We need to convince our hospital to put more assets into the unique needs of these patients to prevent fall, to prevent delirium, to prevent many other issues that we are dealing with. And of course, uh, 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 strengthening massively uh, geriatric rehabilitation. We are spending a lot into general rehabilitation. Now we are opening three or four main new rehabilitation centers in the country and we have to see that these centers are adjust to treat not only young patients but rather also the geriatric population. I will run for my last slide. You could, you could have my presentation and share it. This presentation was presented to the government a few weeks ago. So there's no secret here, and it's not my own opinion. What I'm presenting here is the opinion of the Ministry of Health from the Ministry of Health. That would be one for the last. So these are the four ones which are related to the geriatric giants, that's fault prevention, dementia and Alzheimer treatment. Palliative care is the main issue. I could speak for one full hour about the palliative care. I would just say that palliative care was uh, uh, announced to be one of the focuses of our activity for the coming three years. And of course, uh, a lot should be done in to uh, sophisticated use of medications and the whole world of clinical pharmacology for the elderly population is important. So then this is my last slide looking ahead. Hopefully we'll be looking ahead in a proper way to increase investment and in infrastructure resilience, to improve workforce uh, capacities, but it's not only capacities and capabilities, it's also, it is also the quality of our workforce, to maintain functionality and encourage healthier lifestyle. You could speak, you could speak about longevity, a lot about the lifestyle, again saying lifestyle is an issue that starts when you are born and must continue for the rest of your life and a pivot toward community home care. That is the future of medicine in all aspects. Thank you so much.